We start today in South Los Angeles, where there's been a deadly surge in gang violence over the past several weeks. Over the past two weeks, at least eight children have been among those shot in separate incidents. If you had a 27 separate shooting shootout in any other American city, it probably would have made 60 minutes. <laughs> but it didn't even make the news here. It's about controlling commerce. It's about controlling the flow of money in and out of community. And while some people may cast it as race, it's a form of manipulation that gang members use because they want to control an area, even at the expense of the lives of the people who live there. What do you wish this neighborhood were like? That there won't be no gangsters, no shooting around here. Anybody who walks into my office for the first time, a gang member who wants to work here, I always ask this one question. Name one good thing that's come into your life because of your volume. And I only get one answer. They always say, I can't think <laughs> of a single good thing that's come into my life. Now that's not the answer that they think I want to hear, that's the truth. But the other day, somebody gave me another answer. A homie sat there and he said, he thought for a long time and he says, well, my vadio has made me who I am. I said, no, it's kept you from who you are. Sometimes people think kids are joining a gang because they're seeking something, but they're always fleeing something, always. No exceptions. I never met an exception. The outsider view often drives the inside of this, our policy and how we see things. So people stand outside this issue and they go, there's got to be something positive that kids are drawn and attracted to. But there is no lure, there is no attraction, there is no draw, there is no pull factor, there's only push factor. Kids are not seeking anything positive. They're fleeing something horrendous when they join a gang, that's why. Oh, well, I arrived at Dolores Mission Parish in the mid 80s, uh, and it was the poorest parish in the city and the largest grouping of public housing west of the Mississippi. And, but it also happened to be, which I didn't know, but it, it was the place of the highest concentration of gang activity in the whole city was my parish. So we had eight gangs at war with each other in this tiny little area. So this began really because I was burying kids. So I buried my first in 1988 and my 180th uh, just before this past Christmas. 88 to 98 was just the worst reaching a thousand gang-related homicides in 1992 in LA County, which is, it's, it's never been like that before. So we started to do things. We started a school, a jobs program. Um, then we couldn't find enough felony-friendly employers, so we started our, a business, and then another business. And then, and here we are, this is our fourth location. You know, 1,100 gangs, 86,000 gang members, so about 15,000 folks walk through our doors a year, and then uh, you name just about anything that might be of help, and we do it. I think in the old days I was we were more in, I was a dispatcher. You know, gang member meets job. Go next. 
here's a job. Oh, here's a career, actually. Go. And it was that. that. But this is a group uh, that's in need of so much healing that we kind of lost sight of that. So I used to say a job does 80% of what needs to get done. It gives a gang member a reason to get up in the morning and a reason not to gang bang the night before. We were missing that 20%. We've now found what that is now, which is a therapeutic community, a place of healing, a place where you can be held, a place of attachment repair, a place to find and discover resilience so that you can leave here and the world will throw at you what it will and it, and it won't topple you. Community trumps gang. Boys, all their visitors come by to visit us. And everyone to have a good day and make right choices when you leave early today. Amen. <laughs> 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 <laughs>